What's up, Hockey Town? Welcome to Coffee with Carly, presented by Tim Hortons, but it's more of like a Swedish fika with Henrik Zetterberg. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. You it's know? been a while. Uh, yes, it has, but I'm glad to be back. <laughs> awesome. Well, we got Stanley Cup winner, Conn Smythe winner, and now IIHF Hall of Famer, Henrik Zetterberg. Congratulations. What was it like getting that news? Uh, it was uh, you know, a lot of fun, actually. Uh, so um, probably a month ago, they called me up and, and uh, asked where we're going to be during the World Championship. And I you know, said probably at home. It's like, nope, you're coming and we're doing the uh, introduction. And uh, so obviously it's going to be a lot of fun. You're back home full time in Sweden from where you're from. What's it like being home around the family now? Uh, it, it's nice. You know, we're closer to both my, mine and Emma's parents, um, you know, our siblings. And, and I think that was the main reason why we uh, took the decision to move back. Uh, you know, we were here for, I was here for 16 years, Emma was here for 12. And, and uh, uh, as soon as Luvi came in in our lives, I, I, that's when we realized that. Uh, you know, our parents are far away from him and, and uh, uh, you know, we had a really good chapter here and, and it was time to move on. All right, Luve, he's seven now? Seven, yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. I think when I started, he was a year old. Yeah. <laughs> What's it been like being able to have him here in Detroit with you? He remembered Little Caesar Arena, he doesn't remember the Joe, so, uh, you know, unfortunately the other day we were like, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we drove past uh, where, where Joe was. Uh, uh, was located and I said like this is where actually you know dad played most of his games mm -hmm. and uh, and then we showed him a little picture we showed him the thousand games one when he was uh, on the ice with uh, uh, with Ted Lindsay and uh, and that's when he's kind of oh yeah I remember a little bit but I don't think he really remembered that part but he remembers the locker room you know all the guys here Pete and Russ JR and Brady and those guys oh. Pauly uh, so you know w when he comes back he enjoys watching the games but you know, highlights for him is being in the locker room and hanging with the guys. Yeah. Life after retirement, what's that looking like now? Uh, it, it's a quiet life, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, you know, just be able to spend time with, with, with family and mm -hmm. friends. And, and I'm involved in different, you know, ventures at home, but it doesn't really take up that much of my time. Uh, you know, just enjoying to, you know, be home, uh, spend time with Luve, uh, coaching his team or I'm part of the coaching staff in his team. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I'm trying just to shuffle pucks and stuff and let the other guys do that. <laughs> just to get out on the ice. <laughs> yes, exactly. Do they kind of know your career they, history? Uh, not really, like, mm -hmm. but their dads knows, obviously, you know, when <laughs> yeah. that. But so, but now they, like, they, it's more like I played you on, uh, you know, EA Sport, NHL, mm -hmm. you know, 19. Yeah. And, and so they, uh, and then you have YouTube. So, uh, you know, they, they, they're looking me up a little bit, and uh, so they, they know I played hockey, but uh, uh, probably not where. <laughs> Coming to you for some pointers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So talking more about Luve and his hockey career, how cool is it to be able to share that passion with him now? It, it is awesome. Uh, you know, you, you never know if it, you know if it would be into sport or yeah. not. But uh, you know, he's been with me ever since he was a little kid in the locker room and, and all that, and being on the ice and shooting with mini sticks. So uh, he is a really uh, sports geek, I would say. You know, he plays hockey, soccer, golf, uh, padel. So like it, for me, it's it's almost like a little mini version of me, and oh. I and I think Emma's a little jealous sometimes because we, but it, it's a blast, and especially now when he's seven. You brought him out um, onto the ice for morning skate a few days ago. What was it like being able to have him out on the ice? You know, it was great, and and it is fun. Uh, you know, for me, just to seeing his eyes and and yeah. how he how much he enjoys this, you know, it makes it uh, for me so special. All right, what number does he wear? He doesn't have a number yet, so oh, okay. they, they're picking out. But the last game they had, he had actually had 20, and I had 20 before I came to uh, Detroit. Okay. Uh, so he knew that, and that's my. So his grandpa always had 20. So, uh, but he asked me like, when to can we actually get numbers? Yeah. Uh, so I said, well, you know, in a couple of years, you can pick your number. When you look back at your career, what are some of the moments that stick out the most to you? Uh, it it started pro obviously in Sweden um, uh, when when I went to Timra uh, when I was 14. That that you know from 14 till 18. That's where everything really happened for sure. me. You know I was 
a little late bloomer. Uh, I went there, but you know, starting to get little muscles on me, and mm -hmm. it was a little easier everything. And and um, so the first game playing with a men's team in Timra, special obviously, and then. Uh, that whole thing, the journey we did, we went from the, uh, the second tier and made it to the elite league in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, then I get drafted and, and uh, drafted by, <laughs> by the Red Wings. You know, you, you, you don't pick your team, you know, so right. they pick you. Right. Obviously, I was really lucky to, to get picked by the Wings. And, and, uh, but also back then, I, I, was, I waited all the way until I was 22 to come over here. You see now young kids come in here 18, 19 years old. And They're babies. Yes, and I, I was not ready. You know, I'm so glad that uh, back then they, they had a team that they had and, you know, there yeah. was no room and, and because I was not ready. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had to play in Sweden for a few years, play in the national team, play two world championships, won Olympics before I actually came over here. So. Um, but my first really, I won't say the biggest achievement before was when we, when Timur went up to the highest league because that, okay, yeah. uh, that whole, uh, that journey with that club and all the fans and the city and all that, mm -hmm. making that step up was, uh, was pretty cool. And then, then I was coming over here, that whole journey, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to, you know, to grasp even, you know, to when you look through everything that happened, yeah. uh, you know, coming in for to rookie camp up into Traverse City, uh, and then when the main <laughs> when the main guys came in with Nick and Stevie mm -hmm. and and Drapes and all those guys, and you you were pretty small back then, and and <laughs> you just <laughs> you 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 spoke when when someone <laughs> spoke to you like you didn't really. Uh, do anything but lucky enough to make the team right away mm -hmm. um, I think we, we went on the west coast the first couple of games which was nice I didn't have to start at Joe Lewis Arena yeah uh, first game at home was the banner night because uh, they won the cup the year before uh, sitting on the bench and and you know going through that whole process with uh, you know the banner and the fans and all that was uh, that experience yeah that. It, it was uh, and and when I look back to the, the team that I came into, mm -hmm. you know, pretty much everyone is Hall of Famers. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm glad I didn't realize that back then. Yeah. You know, like it, it's, uh, but the way they really brought me in, uh, I would say Nick and Homer was huge for me, uh, Swedish guys, and, and it's always easier to, uh, you know, talk Swedish to them uh, yeah. and and not just on the ice but off the ice mm -hmm. get everything because uh, when I look back I was 22 I thought I was you know <laughs> old. You were old. Yeah, yeah I seen pictures of me. but it, it was uh, great times mm -hmm. you know I think and me and Pavel really hit off right away uh, uh, the only really young guys on the team yeah. back then uh, playing with Holly uh, Brett Hall you know, and Pav uh, I always say because they ask when you move back now and you're talking hockey with mm -hmm. parents or whatever like uh, I don't think they realize how lucky you have to be to be successful mm -hmm. like you, it's not enough if you're just a real good hockey player or you got talent everything you got to be so lucky like the, the, the team the situation the coach has to believe in you everyone really has to believe in you and you you have to perform at the right time yeah. too to actually uh, take the steps in your career and, mm -hmm. and and I was lucky that way that you know I I performed when I had to perform mm -hmm. but not even knowing about it in a way yeah. you know like it and it everything just fall into place yeah it, like it, you were doing what you knew yeah and it worked out really well for you but it doesn't come without hard work I mean you sacrifice your body day in and day yeah, out oh yeah yeah but for years too yeah but you, you don't think about that yeah and, and and but that's the thing too when I came in I thought I was really trained and, mm -hmm. and thought I was really you know uh, doing all the stuff that I needed to do yeah. and then you come in here and you see how they train and how they like I I remember the first the first couple of games, I was exhausted after games, and all of a sudden, okay. Draper, Stevie, Nick, all those guys went into the gym, and I thought, okay, we we'll go, let's go in and stretch and relax, and then I go in, and they Roll do out. they do a full workout <laughs> after a game, and I'm like, oh boy, this is what you have to do, and so, uh, and it, that's, it, it just took everything to another level, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it was some a little adjustment period, I think, but. Uh, 
when you get into it, you just, that's a new normal. Yeah, and, and the schedule in itself. The schedule in itself. Yeah. I think the first year you just, you just went on with it. Mm -hmm. I think it was the second year that I had a little dip, but it's, it, it, it is, so, yeah. it, it is a sophomore yeah. slump. And, and, but it's, I think it's more everything around it, the travel, mm -hmm. all that, and time zones here and there and coming back. You really got to make sure you get your sleep, you get your food yeah. in you. And, and that's the hard part, I think, for a European player coming over because mm -hmm. the schedule, the games, there's so much more than what we are used to. All right, so you talk about some of the legends that you had in the locker room when you came in, a lot of leaders on a team. But Dylan Larkin, now being the captain of the team, has credited you so much to molding him into the leader he is now. What's it like hearing him say stuff like that? Well, obviously, it, it, it warms my heart. You know, like Dale came in uh, uh, at a really young age, mm -hmm. really talented, good player. Uh, coming from, you know, being a hometown guy, yeah. it, it, it's a lot of, you know, pressure on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but it's such a great kid, you know, ever since, like we, we played together uh, right away, you know, so, uh, but just, he was like a sponge, you know, like he, uh, yeah, like he, every time he had something to tell him, like he really, you know, took it in and, and, um, and the one thing, you know, it's not so much on the, on the ice, you know, because sure. he's such a good player, he does everything right, it's, uh, he, it's, you know, outside, the full picture, you know, I'm really proud of him, really happy that, you know, he signed, uh, you know, the deal here mm -hmm. a couple of months ago and it's going to be here for all his career. All right, awesome. So I'm going to ask you one last question, then I'm going to let you go. If you were to build your dream line, who would your line mates be? It could be players you've played with, any in the Red Wings organization history. Who would you have? Wow, this you? is, I'm, I'm going to get so for not picking some of the guys That's here. Why I did it. <laughs> no, but it, 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 there's two really easy ones. It's Nick Lidstrom. Mm -hmm. I think he's the best defenseman to ever played the game. Uh, you know, being with him almost all my career, seeing what he does on and off the ice, he's mm -hmm. uh, he's a lock. I gotta have Pav because without Pav, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't have the career I had. <laughs> I had. Um, you know, that, then it's so hard. You know, Stevie's huge mm -hmm. you know um, role model and idol mm -hmm. for me you know I, I didn't play with him that um, just the tail end of his career yeah. I, but I learned so much from him yeah. um, uh, you got to have Brett Hall there too because he was part of Draper is there too you know there's so many uh, uh, okay I will go with Nick Lidstrom, Chris Chelios, Paolo Datsuk and Steve Eisen. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Thank you so much yeah, for joining well, me for Coffee you. with Carly. I appreciate yeah. it. It's always a pleasure having you, and so nice to have you back in the building. Once again, thanks for watching Coffee with Carly, presented by Tim Hortons.